Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see a story of murder, greed, corruption, violence, exploitation, adultery, and treachery. All the things we hold near and dear to our hearts. Just talking musicals, musicals, with you. Are you looking for a show to see in the West End or on Broadway? Or is a show coming to town on tour and you're not sure whether it's quite your cup of tea? Well, I'm here to talk about just one of those shows that could well be coming to a theatre near you. It's Canda and Ebb Chicago, and here are 10 reasons why we think it's just the ticket. At number 10, set in 1920 Chicago, this is a sassy, jazzy, slick story of two murderesses, bored housewife Roxy Hart, who harbours dreams of stardom and life in the limelight, who unfortunately hits the headlines in a less than glitzy fashion after shooting her lover dead for ditching her. In prison, she meets the legendary star Velma Kelly, herself accused of murdering the other half of her former sister act. The inmates are watched over by matron Mama Morton, who will do anything for her girls, for a fee, including hiring flashy lawyer Billy Flynn. But does he have enough tricks up his sleeve to save them? And if he does, can they still be famous? At number nine, a crazy storyline it may be, but it's based on a true story written by American playwright and screenwriter Maureen Dallas Watkins. As a young reporter in the 1920s, she worked as a journalist for the famous Chicago Tribune and reported on the sensational murder trials of two women, both accused of murder, and one was even a cabaret singer. This was 1924, when Chicago was run by gangsters, a time that was half jazz age glamour and half prohibition era criminality. Watkins' compelling tales from the trial describe two attractive jazz babies, one a beauty of the cell block, the prettiest woman ever charged with murder in Chicago, the other the most stylish of murderous row. How they both reached for the gun and yet both were surely innocents corrupted by men and the evils of liquor. After months of sensational press coverage in Chicago's seven daily newspapers, both women were found not guilty in each of their separate sensational trials. Hardly surprising then that Watkins took the trials as inspiration for her play Chicago, which was then made into a film in 1927. And then, in the 1960s, the play caught the attention of a real-life legendary Broadway star, Gwen Verdon, who suggested it would make a great musical to her choreographer husband, Bob Fosse. Which brings us much like a Bob Fosse dance move seamlessly to reason number eight. Bob Fosse's distinctive style of choreography included turned-in knees and jazz hands, and in 1973, he made history by being the only person ever to have won an Oscar, Emmy and Tony Award all in the same year. Now, following Watkins' death in 1969, Gwen Verdon, Bob Fosse and producer Richard Fryer obtained the rights to Chicago, and with the unique creativity of composer John Kander and lyricist Fred Ebb, they started work on a musical show which showcased the sardonic cell block tale in a glorious nod to vaudeville and variety, complete with the jazz-infused knockabout style that Roxy and Velma yearned to be a part of. And here we are at number seven. And you know how some shows just take a little while longer to cook? Chicago was most definitely one of those shows. Even though the original was directed and choreographed by Bob Fosse, starred Broadway royalty Gwen Verdon and Cheetah Rivera as the two murderesses most likely to. For some reason, it got very mixed reviews when it opened in 1975. But fast forward to no less than 21 years to May 1996, when New York City Centre Encores presented a pared down concert version of Chicago with the band sitting centre stage in a jewellery box. Directed by Walter Bobby, with choreography in the style of Bob Fosse by Anne Reinking, who also played Roxy Hart, along with Bebe Neweth as Velma Kelly. And this time, the critics loved it. Chicago still glitters hypnotically, reported Ben Brantley of the prestigious New York Times. Chicago remains a sizzler, reported the star ledger. Razzle-dazzle to spare, cried Variety. 
And the most entertaining musical of the decade came the cry from the Associated Press. And it started something very special in the life of this musical. And here we are at number six. And guess what? This wonderful revival of Chicago won six Tony Awards, which at the time was more than any other revival in Broadway history. It won for Best Revival, Best Leading Actress for Bebe Neweth, Best Leading Actor for James Norton, Best Lighting Design for Ken Billington, Best Director for Walter Bobby, and Best Choreographer for Anne Reinking. In June 2022, Chicago became the second show in Broadway history to have notched up 10,000 performances on Broadway and holds the record as the longest running musical revival and the longest running American musical in Broadway history. At number five, it has to be the show's five main leading characters, Roxy Hart and her long-suffering husband, Amos, Velma Kelly with her glamorous showbiz ways, the mistress of the keys, matron Mama Morton, and Billy Flynn, the suspiciously successful saviour of the cell block and smooth-talking, show-stopping defence lawyer for hire, as long as it's for a good price. There's of course one more character who it would be remiss to overlook, and that's the mysterious court reporter, Mary Sunshine. And each of the lead roles have been played by an extraordinary roll call of talented performers over the years, including Ruthie Henschel, Carol Woods, Cooper Gooding Jr., David Sabella, Josephina Gabrielle, Uta Lempa, Joel Gray, Jimmy Osmond, Sarah Sotet, Gary Wilmot, David Hasselhoff, Corey English, Jerry Orbach, Brenda Edwards, Sharon D. Clark, and Denise Van Outen, to name just a few. At number four, it's the lure of Kanda and Ebb's fabulous music. Chicago is the seventh of what would go on to become a total of 20 shows written by the duo. In an article for The Guardian in 2018, Emma Brooks wrote, what wins one over in the end is the quality of the music and the way it speaks to Fosse's choreography. And that's just it. This version of Chicago, in all its pared down simplicity, is completely connected from every beat and finger click, from the catchy upbeat tunes of all that jazz, razzle dazzle, and Roxy Hart to the ventriloquism of Velma Takes the Stand and the steamy cell block tango. And that's another thing. The music allows the ensemble to be as first class as the leads. And I don't just mean the dancers. Which brings us neatly to reason number three. Now you'd be forgiven for thinking it might be a bit crowded up there with the orchestra on stage as well as the performers, but think again. Putting the band on stage in their jury box is a genius move, with the characters wending their way around the box, interacting with the band as they go. The on-stage orchestra are in the courtroom watching the action and part of this exciting ensemble. It's what makes Chicago so completely perfect, and to my mind, part of why it's worked so successfully for so many years. And it's clearly not just me that thinks it. When it opened in the West End at the Phoenix Theatre in 2018, chief theatre critic of the Times, Anne Treneman, declared, even the band gets in on the act, with the first trumpet, Annette Brown, a total star. I mean, how many times have you ever known a member of the orchestra to be singled out with such an accolade in a first night review? Reason number two brings me to a fabulous fact about Chicago. It's not just a show that you can only see in the West End or on Broadway, because this show really has got legs. Since the revival got going in 1996, the show has been seen by more than 33 million people worldwide and played approximately 30,000 performances, playing in more than 485 cities and 35 countries around the globe. And here we are at reason number one. As a final salute and a nod to its phenomenal commercial success, Chicago has grossed more than $615 million on Broadway since 1996 and more than $1.5 billion worldwide and been performed in 12 different languages. I've seen the show something like seven times, once on Broadway, at least twice in the West End and four times on tour. And why? 
you guessed it. Because aside from being a sensational story when it first hit the headlines back in the 1920s, it gives us a glamorous glimpse of the jazz age and continues to be one of the classiest, slickest shows you'll ever have the pleasure to see. Well, that's it for our look at 10 reasons to see Chicago. And you've got to admit, it's as tempting as the cell block tango. I'm Leslie Ann Knight. We hope you thoroughly enjoy your trip to 1920 Chicago. And don't forget to tap subscribe so you get the latest video as soon as they drop. And if you've enjoyed the story today, we'd love a like too. See you soon. Just talking musicals, musicals with you.